I didn't know really what kidney disease meant. When you look at her, you say, oh, she doesn't look like she's that sick. She's really living on the edge, and there's no guarantees how she's going to do tomorrow. Every day! I mean, there's bone on bone and arthritis and spurs, and it's not good to be in pain. It's not good to be in pain. He's just hurting, and he has been. It didn't really hit me in how dangerous it was, and it was dealing with my brain. And that can be fatal when things start to herniate through the, the base of the skull. I felt like he was gone, like I had lost my husband. What can we do to try and give him the best chance of regaining the brain function? Let's start cooling him. Gosh, what if he doesn't respond? What if he stays like this? Fire and Medical 356. I'm in Chula Vista. Is that a house or an apartment? It's a house. He may be having a heart attack or a stroke. I already have the paramedics on the way as I'm talking to you. Come on. I I'm gone. I I'm no longer here. So. Keep breathing. I felt like he was gone, like I had lost my husband. Like. How did this day turn into this? Keep going there. They're going to pull up right now. But I was like, oh my gosh, my husband is dead. No pulse. All of a sudden, they were shocking him. Charging. Shocking. I just remember them counting the shocks, and I believe he got up to like the fifth shot. Charging. Clear. Shocking. Analyzing heart rhythm. He's got a rhythm. Let's go. Let's go. Because it's been so long, oh my goodness, what does this mean as far as brain damage? And, and I know my husband is a fighter. He's had a, a motorcycle accident a couple years prior. I'm just so thankful that we ended up at Sharp Chula Vista. I think that that's where he was gonna get the best care. He had a heartbeat, but that was the extent of it. No response whatsoever. The emergency team takes over. We're stabilizing him from head to toe. No breathing. I've got a good pulse. What can we do to try and give him the best chance of regaining his neurological or brain function. And you know, walking out of this hospital, some don't ever move, talk, communicate, see, hear again. Fortunately, we have the ability to do something called targeted temperature management or therapeutic hypothermia. At Sharp, we call it coat ice, which essentially is cooling his body quickly down to a certain temperature range to try and give him the best shot of recovering neurologically. It slows down the brain's oxygen demand, inflammation, and chemical processes. Okay, let's hook the pads up. We're connected. Let's start cooling. Baby, I love you. I'm gonna be here when you wake up. We're gonna get through this. We will get through this together. From the emergency room, we went to the ICU. Anything that he needed, they were there. He was on full life support. But it just, man, it felt like my husband is not here anymore. My role was to continue throughout and monitor, especially within that 24-hour period, which is by far the most important. We want to maintain that goal temperature, and we go through all the important aspects of what's going on inside the body. They did a good job of resuscitation, CPR, before we're starting to treat him. So when all that lines up, we have a good opportunity to have good recovery. And then there's a process of reversing the cold ice, and that's like 18 hours, you know, so it's all incremental. We start to rewarm the body in a manner that is gentle. You're literally watching your loved one thaw. The moment's coming, it's here. Gosh, what if he... What if he doesn't respond? What if he doesn't, what if he stays like this? All right, Leo, it's time to wake up. Leo, time to wake up. Time to wake up, Leo. Great, Mr. Leo, it's time to wake up now. I knew coming in the next day that, that I was gonna be happy to see him wake up. And we were all ecstatic to see that. It was a lot, you know, and to wake up in a hospital bed, you know, it's humbling. I still have a partner. <laughs> He's still here. <laughs> How you doing? Good, good, good. You got that tube out, huh? Breathe yes. on your own. How you doing, Sam? 
He had cardiac arrest of unknown reversible causes. We call it idiopathic for no reason. A defibrillator is this device and it'll sit underneath your skin right here and it'll watch your rhythms 24 seven. If you have a cardiac arrest again where your heart's going so fast, it'll shock within seconds and then keep shocking. With this age of Wi-Fi and internet, rather than checking the device every three months in the clinic, I can know the status of Leo's device every day. We're giving him the best opportunity to survive. It definitely has made us stronger and we definitely have a greater love and appreciation for each other. I feel 100%, you know. I mean, I, I definitely feel mortal at this point. <laughs> I get it now, okay, but yeah. Game day, baby. Game day. Ha! Ha! I'm really pumped up to uh, to get this bad boy replaced and uh, to have just new vitality, new energy. I ain't going to this like, oh man, I got surgery. It's gonna stink. For me, this knee has been just killing me for three years. I'm like fired up. I'm like, let's go. As much as I have some angst and nervousness, I know I'm in the right hands of the right people. It's go time. In Todd's case, I decided to use Mako Robotic Assisted Technology because he developed arthritis in his knee. But the main reason we did it was because he was hurting. He couldn't do the things he wanted to do anymore. I'm a trainer, coach, leader, father, husband, and motivator. He's hardworking, and he just really genuinely loves what he does. And he does it with such enthusiasm. My job is to bring out the best in who I'm working with. Not always athletes. I work with a lot of everyday fitness enthusiasts and weekend warriors. As a coach, you are empowering people and inspiring people and motivating people. He's just hurting, and he has been. It seems like, you know, it's really taken a decline with football season. He trains the pro athletes in the morning, then he goes to the high school, and he's got long days with practice and, and games. Get after it today, baby. Let's go. What are you doing now? Bah! I have a ton of fun with social media, but I don't do a lot of yelling and screaming at home. I'm definitely much more of the gentler, more serene dad. It was at the end of summer, and the pain was just so, so bad, and he got an appointment with Dr. Jankowitz, and I told him that I was gonna go to that appointment. I don't normally go to his doctor's appointment. He's an independent guy. My whole purpose of being there was to make sure that he was honest with how much pain he was in. I needed to leave that appointment knowing Knowing that we were all on the same page, we were gonna schedule this surgery. Hey McKenna, I have a, a robot named Rocky today. Yeah, I know. Brady, Brady named him last night. His name is Rocky. Kisses. And he's doing a right medial partial knee replacement. So once Dr. Jankowitz comes and speaks with you, he'll still be in recovery another hour. Then he'll go up to the second floor where he's going to sleep. I know playing. I'm up on stage or in the middle of a huddle and firing people up, and I see that look in people's eyes. Every day! Every day! Hoorah! I'm drawing strength on those people right now, that huddle. I always tell them there's going to be a day when I need it from you. And uh, right now, I see those faces. I see those high fives and the sweat. And I can't wait to get back in the huddle and see to motivate people to be great. Here we go. I hope that today, when that head hits the pillow. We're putting in the pins into the femur and the tibia. They're attached to the trackers, which tell us where the knee is in space. Using the probe, we map out the femur and the tibia, and this allows us to share information with the CAT scan in the computer. And what the robotic arm allows me to do is just take out the bone that is necessary. I can't paint outside the lines, so it gives me perfect placement in that prosthesis. Robotic technology takes it from perfect to super perfect, to, to, to the point where it's just so good that you just can't imagine that your x-rays continually look like that. You know, he can't be a degree off, because that'll lead to early wear, and that'll lead to early failure. Hey. Are you all right? Going to wrestle. Does it hurt right now? It's no. numb. Physical therapy. Oh, Good yeah. afternoon. You doing push-ups? 
My name's Nancy. I'm your physical therapist. My first impression of Todd, I could see right away he's so motivated and health conscious and just super bubbly and funny. Our role is to help get them to get moving again and actually get on their feet and walk in as soon as possible for optimal recovery. Who's walking? Congratulations. Just to see the smile on their face when they make that accomplishment, that first walk is just like the ultimate. Am I being timed? I mean, do I need to pick this thing up? I, mean, I don't want to be, you know, trying to set records here. <laughs> you can do it. Thank you. <laughs> that attitude, I like that. I love that attitude. Everywhere I go, man, you guys are the best. I got my own cheerleading crew around here. I'm actually excited for today. Not only am I not in pain, today is day one of recovery. Acupuncture and massage and physical therapy. Ten years ago, no one would have thunk of ever doing this in a hospital. Now it's part of their entire complete experience, and to me, that's cutting edge. Days that were real tough when, you know, you look at my x-rays and it hurt. I mean, there's bone on bone and arthritis and spurs, and I'm like, man, how did I get this way? What's up, brother? It's good to see you. Good to see you. You ready to work, Ted? Let's go. So physical therapy is important work? because it allows people to get back to doing the things they want to be doing. Whether it's a mother who wants to be able to pick up her child or someone like Todd, who's a really high-level athlete and trainer who can take his clients through a full hour program and be able to do it safely, independently, and at a very high level. One of my favorite things to do is go out and go for a little walk, jog, or run with Melanie and our pup. And Jersey and I are out walking or running. I haven't been able to do that. It's one of the things I'm most looking forward to. Five seconds. That's it? That's it. I like 10, but I'll go five. A little halfway. Good. Now push. Push into this. Come on, pull back into it. There, that's, <sighs> that's the motion, okay? The last few months, my physical pain was more than most people do. And uh, it's not good to be in pain. It's not good to be in pain. Push back and up. Come do on. a squat jump? No. Plyometric? No. Fast? Not like yet. Explosive, hit the ceiling? 12 weeks. <laughs> 12 weeks, hit the ceiling? <sighs> Come on. It's accelerating this, baby. I am so grateful. The care, the support that I had from day one all the way through the rehab process. <clears throat> Push more. Extend more. <clears throat> you see it? But when I hit this there. stage again, Go. that it's like a, a whole other level that no one's ever seen before. So I'm kind of stewing, getting ready to go. Something's percolating. Yoo-hoo! It was a far cry from June 28, 2019. Surgery, partial knee replacement. Who's fired up right now? We came to fight, we came to win. We lost the foe, but never again. Back on our grind, you know what it is. Yeah, yeah, this is our year. Got us down once, we got up again. Put in the work, so I know we gon' win. This is for real, we never pretend. We gotta win, win, win. It didn't really hit me how dangerous it was. It was dealing with my brain. I just love the outdoors. Surfing is definitely, water is definitely um, my passion. I outrigged, did triathlons. I'm a big runner. Lots of yoga, I'm into Pilates. I'm an adventure person, definitely. Robin came to us about four months ago complaining of a whooshing sound in her left ear that had been bothering her for some time. I wake up Easter morning and I hear this whoosh, whoosh, whooshing sound in my eardrum on my left ear. It sounded like when I was pregnant, I could hear my, you hear the baby's heartbeat through a sonogram. That's what it sounded like in my left ear. And that can be fatal when things start to herniate through the, the base of the skull. So that's often when, when people die of a brain hemorrhage, that's why they're they're dying. Didn't think anything of it other than like, okay, this is weird. Why am I hearing my heartbeat? And then it just increased as the months went on and then it started throbbing on the back of my ear. I notice some memory. I know what I want to say, but I have to stop, really think about the word I want. We worked her up with some scans and eventually we did an angiogram where we went in through her groin and took some pictures of the arteries in her head and neck. At first I was like taken back because nothing, you know, I've been a healthy girl, so what the heck is this, you know? And that showed us what's called a fistula, which is an abnormal connection between an artery and a vein inside the head where there shouldn't be one. He saw it and it was uh, like, like a big cobweb just all bundled up. 
and it was a level two, so that means it needed surgery. Today we're going to work inside Robin's veins in her brain, either putting glue or coils or a combination of both inside the veins to try to cure the fistula. I love you, I love you. You basically pack as many coils as you can into a tight space and that sort of seals off the hole between the artery and the vein the best that you can. Uh, just a glide wire and a glide cap. Uncouple, it'll be a roadmap injector, roadmap back. Back, 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 good. Forward, roadmap on. Ready to fire? All right, time for the vein again. Okay. Step one is done, then we need step two. These are long metal strands of platinum, a very soft metal. When they come out of the catheters, they form balls or, or coils of metal. We're gonna quickly go on B, one sec. Second coil coming in. There. Okay. Good. Okay. This guy out. Okay, second coil being detached. This Good is man. awesome. Yeah. Good, Good job. job. Thanks. Everything went very well. So we got the fistula completely cured, at least angiographically, so it's gone on the pictures. Down the road, can I continue my normal lifestyle surfing? The goal is to get you back to doing exactly what you want to do. Sharp has state-of-the-art equipment, which allows us to have better imaging of the brain and allows us to put the coils exactly where we want them to go to give us the best chance to cure Robin's fistula. I can't do a marathon. <laughs> okay, it's like, don't go running right now. <laughs> so Robin is a really sweet patient that I'm taking care of today. She is an incredible woman, came in after listening to her own body. She's a very healthy, conscientious woman and noticed some different sensations that she was feeling. So let me just show you what we did. There's this fistula here where there's the abnormal connection between the artery and the vein. So here was when we're done. Oh wow, what a and difference. And so you don't see any veins at all. So, that, so that's what I was talking about. We got a complete, wow. at least angiogram, graphic cure. In other words, there's nothing left on the pictures. There's no abnormal veins. Can I ask you some silly questions? <laughs> where, where are you? Gross font. Okay, what Sharp. year is it? Uh, 19... Oh my gosh, seriously, Ron? 1990. No! Oh my gosh. Is it 2002? 2019, sorry. 2019. Okay, do you know the month? October. October, okay. Sometimes, was that one of those word finding where you felt like you knew it, but you couldn't get it out? That's what you were describing over the last couple of weeks, right? Mm -hmm. um, you knew it was 2019, you just couldn't, couldn't yeah, really say it. Yeah, 1990, it's like, right. come on, Robin. When you try to say it, you say something else. Um, things may take crazy. a while to adjust back to normal, but I do want to see how these word finding difficulties progress and and uh, make sure the headaches get better and things like that. There's definitely a percentage of people that come in at the right time where we're able to save their lives by doing a preventative surgery. Um, that was the case in, Ro in Robin's case, I believe, because I think her fistula eventually would have bled into her head and she might have died from that. My word finding has gotten better. Dr. Vt is saying it's the pressure, it's like regulating the pressure now in the brain the blood flow to the brain. Today's December 19th, 2019. It's like my brain's getting food now, so now it's all happy, going yay. Yeah, I'm easy peasy, I just kind of go with the flow, like the ocean, like the waves. My name is Cheyenne and I have kidney failure. I made this Instagram page to talk about my story, spread awareness about kidney disease, and possibly find a kidney donor. I thought I was gonna die, pretty much. I thought I was gonna be on dialysis and then just die. The problem with kidney failure is it comes on very slowly, and by the time she found out, she had already lost 90% of her kidney function. For as long as I can remember, I haven't had the same kind of energy as everyone else. I told my mom, I was like, I like suck at running. And she was like, oh, you're probably just not athletic. You know, we just shrugged it off. When you look at her, you say, oh, she doesn't look like she's that sick. She's really living on the edge, and uh, there's no guarantees how she's gonna do tomorrow. This is my friend. Best friends. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a weird. You made a mystery out of love. Breathe in your life. I do love him a lot. I feel like he's really like just like a part of me. It's just really natural and organic and everything, so. We were together for seven months when I started dialysis. That's not even that long of a time, and he's still stuck by me, so that just shows his character and who he is as a person. So it's, you know, we hang out, 
don't do too much. If we do, maybe it's one active thing a day. And active for her is leaving the house, going out to eat, going to the grocery store. That's, that's a lot. Okay, hey guys, so I wanted to make a video today regarding peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis is where fluid gets pumped up into your peritoneal membrane, and then it stays in there for however long a prescription says, and then it drains out the dialysis fluid along with excess fluid that your body made. My coordinator said that the transplant list could go up to 13 years. I miss like normal bo bodily functions, like I don't pee and I miss peeing, and I miss drinking water. Can you imagine not being able to drink as much water as you want to? If you're thirsty, I want to drink water. I can't, my mouth is dry, I can't drink water. I just can't imagine the restrictions that our patients have. Daily life, it's kind of boring right now. Did you have fun? Yeah, I'm just tired. Wait, can we take a break? Yeah, you want me to carry you? Usually wake up late because she has a really hard time sleeping and then waking up in the morning is rough for her. So normally we don't get out of the house till like two, which doesn't leave you much time. So we leave, maybe go do something really quick and then go home, start getting set up for her night of dialysis. I've had a few possible donors, potential donors get tested and they didn't pass the, the whole testing process for transplant. Not very many people step forward and say, um, I want to help somebody by having surgery to have a kidney removed. And I'm doing it not because I have to have a sick kidney or because I have an illness. I'm doing it because I want to help somebody. I just wouldn't feel right not to even try or to do it, you know? Or I can just give it to you and then we can both be happy. We're at Sharp today, me and Gavin, and we're going to find out whether or not he's going to donate to me, so. It's not really a, a why, it's a can you, and if you can, then you kind of have to, right? I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't, because I care about her, and if you care about somebody, you gotta do whatever you can to help them out, right? The only concern really is if it's possible. If it is, then go through with it, and then just face the recovery road, which we'll do together anyway, so I'm gonna be all right. <laughs> he took such good care of me, and now he's trying to give me like a body part, and he didn't even think twice about it, so I don't know how I got so lucky. Okay. okay, but I can see you and hear you at all times, so if you need... The CAT scan is like one of the major tests. We're looking to see that you have two kidneys, because some people are born with one. When you donate a kidney, you lose potentially 25 to 35 percent of kidney function. We know that from his testing, that he has great kidney function and that he can safely live with 25 to 35 percent less of kidney function. Everything looks good. You're actually a very good match. It's surprising because you're not blood relatives, and that's like icing on the cake. I'm feeling pretty nervous and scared about it, honestly. The greatest benefits for people who have kidney failure are to get transplanted while they're young, because it allows you to live a normal life, it allows you to have children, it allows you to work, it allows you to go to school, and it not only improves your quality of life, but it lengthens your life. So the earlier you get transplanted, the better you do. The longer you're on dialysis, the worse you tend to do. The day before my surgery, I'll have been on dialysis for 627 days. So that's 15,064 hours. So what's gonna happen is you're both gonna come in early. You're gonna check in early, you're gonna check in a little bit later. So by eight o'clock, you should already be gone and you will be sitting there. It'll probably take a couple of hours before we roll you in to the operating room. At the end of the operation, she'll have three kidneys, two little kidneys that aren't working very well, and then one kidney here in her pelvis, which hopefully is working very well. I'm gonna stand here like this, literally with my hands cupped until he drops Gavin's kidney into my hands in a little baggie, okay? Then I'll take that bag and we'll go to the back of the room. So we got two arteries, one vein, one ureter. It'll take us about 45 minutes to sew the kidney into you and get it unplugged and, and work it. Forcep and just hold the renal vessels. So now everything's sewn in. The ureter's right here, it's filling up with urine, coming right out of here, and we're gonna just duck it into the bladder. Which once everything's in and working and I'm happy, then we'll sew you back shut and wake you up and bring you to the recovery room. You're welcome to sleep, you're safe. Yeah. 
I'm watching over you closely, okay, hon? You're doing great. Yeah, she's no. probably yeah, she's probably made a liter. And she'll be making about a liter an hour probably so most of the evening, and then it'll start slowing down tomorrow. So uh, it's a happy kidney. I mean, it's, you can see all the blood vessels in the kidney there, all lighting up very nicely. It's not something I'm giving to her. It's something we're going through together, and she should never feel like ashamed or like she put me through something. And I just want her to, you know, live her best life and be happy. <laughs> Kidney's doing great, though. Thank you. So, this is you. I'm just really, really, really grateful for him, and I don't think he sees how amazing he is. Like he's done so much for me more than anyone. other people that are going to see this and they shouldn't feel like it's not okay for them not to be okay because it's not easy being in a relationship with somebody like this. So our romantic move is always coming back and always being there for each other at the end of the day and understanding what each other's going through. We're just so young and we're trying to figure out what we want to do with our lives and after he met me I know everything changed. I feel like I have more freedom that makes me happy. I think about Gavin a lot and what he's done for me. But the kidney itself, I know it's function and I know it's this beautiful thing that's keeping me alive. So I'm grateful for that, but it's, it's mainly Gavin that I think about. He's young and He just did this huge thing for me without even thinking twice about it. The connection's always been there. We just like feel it in our hearts. very much a team yeah and I think that's important he loves telling everybody that he is bionic the bionic man and that he's you know got a bionic knee and I'd say like on a, a 1 to 10 scale it was like a, an 11 I mean that's all that we're about is to get you through this and to do it in such a way that is kind and compassionate and tender through all this I've decided I want to volunteer at sharp I just want to help I felt in my heart I wanted to give back, and so giving back is volunteering, sharing my experience that I had. I'm Robin, I'm a volunteer here with Sharp Hospital. Not really knowing what the outcome was gonna be, and then for me to get my husband back, you know, <laughs> almost better than, you know, <laughs> it's like the upgraded version. You improved. <laughs> We've all been given this opportunity to change the lives of people, and we practice it, we do it and it makes a huge difference.